let me start with another crossover operator name multipoint crossover. Now, before we start discussing the principle of this particular crossover operator, let me take one example. Supposing that I am going to solve the optimization problem involving 10 real variables and to represent each real variable supposing that I am using 10 bits. So, the g string will be 10 multiplied by 10 100 bits long. Now, let me let me just show that particular the g string. Now, the g string will look like this. Supposing that this is 100 bits long. Now, at the g string is 100 bits long. So, there will be 99 places for selecting the crossover site if I use the single point crossover. Now, supposing that fortunately or unfortunately, so we have selected the crossover site which is nothing but here. So, this is nothing but the crossover site in single point crossover. Now, according to the principle of single point crossover, the bits which are lying on the left hand side of the crossover site, there will be no change and the bits which are lying on the right hand side. So, there will be swapping and if we just follow this particular principle of single point crossover. So, there is a possibility that in the children solution, there will be no change, no diversity due to this particular the single point crossover because here. So, on this particular left side bits there will be no change. So, we may not get the required diversity in the children solution compared to the, the parents. Just to remove this particular difficulty of the single point crossover, the concept of the multi point crossover has come. Now, here actually what we do is so, we try to select a number of crossover site at random using the random number generator. Now, let us see what happens here. Now, supposing that these two parents are going to participate in multi point crossover and as I told the crossover sites multiple number of crossover sites are selected at random. Now, here I am selecting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 crossover sites. Now, let us see how to find out the children solution from these two parents. The principle is very simple. Now, what we do is first we concentrate on the leftmost crossover site that means, this particular crossover site and the bits which are lying on the left hand side of the first crossover site there will be no change and the bits which are lying between the first and second. So, here so there will be some swapping. The next is your the bits lying between the second and third. So, there will be no change then the bits lying between the third and fourth. So, there will be swapping and the bits lying between fourth and fifth will remain the same and the bits which are lying on the right hand side of the last crossover site. So, there will be some swapping and due to that. So, you will be getting the children solution which is nothing but this. So, this is actually the children solution which will be getting using the, the concept of this multi point crossover. Now, here as we select a number of crossover sites at random. So, there is a possibility that there will be some sort of diversification in the children solution compared to the, the parent solutions. Now, this is actually the, the merit or the plus point of the, the multi point crossover uh, in comparison with the single point the crossover. So, this particular crossover operator uh, is more efficient particularly for the problem having a large number of variables.
Now, I am just going to discuss with another uh, crossover operator which is very popular and this is known as uniform crossover. Now, this uniform crossover is actually a slightly modified version and I should say a sophisticated version of this particular the multi point crossover. Now, let us see how does it work. Now, the principle is very simple. Now, supposing that these two are the parents which are going to participate in this particular the uniform crossover. So, what we do is we start from the leftmost bit position and that means, I am here. So, here we take the help of some sort of coin tossing with probability 0 0.5 for appearing head. Now, if head appears then there will be swapping of the bits and if it is a failure then the bits will remain the same. Now, this particular procedure is followed at, at each of the bit position. Now, in computer program now how to implement this particular the, the, the technique? The principle is very simple. So, what we do is at each of the bit position we just take the help of one random number generator. Now, this particular random number generator will generate a number lying between 0 and 0 0.5. So, if sorry lying between 0 and 1.0. Now, if the number generated by the random number generator is found to lie between 0 and 0 0.5. So, that will be a success that means, success means the head will appear and there will be swapping of the, the bits. So, this particular principle is followed just to get the children's solutions from the, the parents. Now, if we just consider these two parents and if I consider that head has appeared at a particular bit position, then let us see how to find out the children's solution. Let us assume that the head has occurred at the position that is the second one, the fourth one the fifth one, eighth, ninth, twelfth, eighteenth and twentieth position. That means, in these positions there is a success in coin tossing that means, the head has appeared. So, there will be swapping. Now, if I see the parent position, so this is the parent position second. So, this is 0 1. So, 0 1, so it is a success. So, this will become 1 and 0. Then comes your the fourth one. So, this is the fourth position. So, this is a success. So, there will be a swapping. So, it is 1 1. So, here on the children's solution this will remain same as 1 1. Then comes your the, the, the fifth position is a success. So, once again there will be a swapping. So, 0 0 will become 0 0 here. Now, this particular procedure is followed and if we follow this particular principle. So, starting from the two parents will be getting the children's solution like this. Now, how to implement? So, the method which I have already discussed is one of the possible methods. Now, if you see the literature there is another method with the help of which. So, this particular the uniform crossover can be implemented very easily. The method is as follows. Now, supposing that say I have got 20 bits and I will have to implement the uniform crossover. Now, what we do is we take the help of, of a template. Now, this template is nothing but actually uh, this is a, a uh, just like your the plate sort of thing where there are some marked position 20 positions for the 20 bits. Now, supposing that so this is the template. Now, here on this template. So, this is the position for the first bit, this is the position for the second bit and so on and might be this is the position for the, the twentieth bit. Now, what we do is, so here at all these twenty positions we generate one and zero using the random number generator. Now, supposing that there is one here, there is zero here, there is one here and in between there are some zeros and ones. Now, the principle is as follows, 
if there is a one at a particular position, there will be a swapping of the bits. And if there is zero, so there will be no swapping and the bits will remain intact. And this particular procedure is followed for all the 20 bits positions. And by using this template, I can also uh, implement the concept of this particular the uniform crossover. And here in this particular uniform crossover, starting from the two parents, so I will be getting the children's solution. Now, if I compare the performance of this particular your uniform crossover with your the single point crossover or say two point crossover. Now, we are getting some advantage in uniform crossover in the sense that the problem having the large number of variables. So, this uniform crossover is found to perform better compared to both single point and two point crossovers. Now, we have seen the way the different crossover operators are working and using the crossover operator how to get the children solution. And as I told several time using this crossover operator there will be exchange of properties and we will be getting some uh, diversity in the, the children solutions. Now, let us try to concentrate on another very powerful operator which is known as mutation. Now, if you see what happens in biology, so this biological mutation is well known and let me let me take a very simple example of this biological mutation. Now, generally the crows are black in color, but if you just try to find out uh, if and if you are fortunate enough if and if you get one crow which is having white color. So, that could be due to the biological mutation. The concept of this biological mutation has been copied in genetic algorithm in the artificial way and here also we used the principle of mutation. Now, let us see how to implement this particular the mutation. Now, this mutation can bring local change around the current solution. And by doing that, it can help to overcome the local minima problem. Now, I am just going to take one example just to show you how does it work. So, here in mutation, this is a bit wise mutation. So, what I do is, if there is one that is converted into 0 and vice versa. Now, as I told, it helps the GA to overcome the local minima problem. Now, let us see how can it overcome this particular the local minima problem. Let me take the example of a function having only one variable. Now, here in this particular function say y is a function of only one variable f x. Now, if I plot and supposing that I am getting this type of local basin and that type of global basin. Now, here in genetic algorithm what we do is we start with a population of solution selected at random. Now, supposing that unfortunately all the initial solutions are lying in this particular the local basin. And if the solutions lying on the local basin and if I run g a for a large number of iteration there is a possibility g a is going to hit this particular as the optimal solution. But this is not the globally optimal solution this is a locally optimal solution whereas, the globally optimal solution could be here because this is a minimization problem. So, this is a globally minimum solution and that is the global locally minimum solution. Now, if I run g a for a large number of generation there is no guarantee that I will it will be able to hit the globally minimum solution. Now, it will be able to hit the globally minimum solution if and only if if you can push at least one solution from local basin to the global basin. Now, it is this particular operator the mutation operator which can push at least one solution from the local basin to the global basin. And if it can push one solution to the global basin there is a possibility g a through a number of iteration it is going to hit this particular the globally minimum solution. 
Now, this is the way actually the G A is going to help the G A. So, the mutation is going to help the G A to come out of the, the local minima the problem. Now, let me let me go back to the previous slide just to show you. Now, how to how to select that particular the probability of mutation. Now, here if you see the probability of mutation plays a great role. Now, if the p m that is the probability of mutation is found to be or if it is selected to be a very low value the very purpose of using the mutation may not be served. On the other hand, if the probability of mutation is selected to be a very high value. So, this g a will become equivalent to the random walk method or the random search method. That means, you will have to select this particular the p m in a very uh, careful way and the thumb rule to select actually this particular p m is as follows that p m should lie between 0 0.1 divided by capital L and 1 divided by capital L. Now, here this L is nothing but the length of the, the G A string. Now, supposing that this L is equals to 100, there are 100 bits in the G A string and here actually what you do is, so 0 0.1 divided by L is nothing but 0 0.001 and 1 divided by L is nothing but 0 0.01 and this particular p m should lie between this. So, the p m should lie between 0 0.001 to 0 0.01. So, generally as I, the, as, I, as I told generally we keep the value of this mutation probability to a low value, to a, we just select to a low value. Now, let me try to understand the utility of this particular the mutation operator in a slightly different way. Now, supposing that I have got one j whose task is to find out the optimal solution and for simplicity let me assume that the population size that is your the n that is found to be only 4, say capital N is equals to 4 and let me take a very hypothetical example. Supposing that the G A strings are as follows and in each of the G A string supposing that I am using only 10 bits. The G A string is as follows say 0, 0, 1, 1 dot 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 last is 1, 0. The next is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. The next is your 0, 0, 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 0. Supposing that these are the, the G A strings and they are going to participate in crossover. Now, if I use single point or two point or multi point or uniform crossover, so you will be getting some children solution. Now, if I use this crossover operator there is a possibility that I am going to miss the value 1 at the leftmost bit position. Now, if I use single point crossover, so at the leftmost bit position I will not be getting 1. If I use 2 point multi point uniform at the leftmost bit position I will not be getting 1, but supposing that my globally optimal solution is such that if I want to indicate that there must be one at the leftmost bit position. That means, if I want to hit that globally optimal solution, the condition is the leftmost bit position should be one. That means, there should be one here. Now, the reality is not even a single the crossover operator which I have discussed will be able to generate one on the leftmost bit position. Then, how to overcome this particular problem? To overcome this particular problem, it is the mutation that is the bit wise mutation which is going to help us and there is a possibility that I will be getting 1 
at the leftmost bit position using this particular the mutation operator. So, this is actually the real strength of this particular the mutation operator and that is why we should use the, the mutation. Now, supposing that I have got only such 4 G A string and in each G A string I have got only 10 bits. Now, 10 multiplied by 4, so I have got 40 bits. Now, if I have got only 40 bits and supposing that the mutation probability is say 0 point say 0 3. So, if it is 0 0.03, now this is equal to your 1.2, 40 multiplied by 0 0.03. So, this is nothing but 1.2, that means out of these 40 bits, there will be mutation probabilistically only on 1 bit, this is equivalent to 1, but the, as it is probabilistic. So, there could be mutation on 2 bits also and at the same time there could be a chance that there will be no mutation. If I consider the mutation probability as 0 0.03. Now, that means we have understood that the mutation probability has got some role and this operator has got big role in the, the working principle of this particular the genetic algorithm. Now, let us try to find out like whose contribution is more and let us try to compare the contribution of this particular the crossover and your the mutation operator. And my question is should I go for crossover or only mutation or both. Now, to answer this actually the whole community of this non traditional optimization tools particularly those who are working on G A, uh, actually the whole community was divided into two subgroups. Now, one group used to believe that there should be crossover as well as mutation and another group used to believe there should be only mutation, crossover is redundant. Now, to answer that actually I am just going to uh, uh, discuss on this, this issue. Now, if I want to have a very efficient G A search, there should be construction as well as disruption. That means, you will have to construct some G A string, you will have to uh, uh, destruct also, because we want some diversification in the, the search process. Now, if you see in terms of disruption capability, now, this particular your the mutation operator is much more powerful in comparison with the, the crossover operator, but if you see in terms of the construction capability, now the crossover operator is preferred to the, the mutation operator and that is why in genetic algorithm and genetic programming, we actually consider both your crossover and mutation, but we give slightly more weightage on the crossover compared to the, the mutation. On the other hand, the techniques like evolutionary strategy or evolutionary programming, they give more weightage on the, the mutation operator. In fact, they do not use the concept of this particular the crossover operator. Now, I am just going to solve one numerical example just to help you in understanding like how to carry out the calculation little bit in binary coded G A. Now, here what I am going to discuss like how many bits are to be assigned to represent the real variable and to represent the integer variable if you want a desired level of precision. Now, the way I have formed this particular the numerical example is as follows. I am just going to use one binary coded J to solve one optimization problem having two variables. Now, out of two variables, 
there is one integer variable and the second one is the real variable. Now, real variable is having the range 0 0.2 to 10.43 say and the integer variable is having the range 0 to 63. Now, how to design a suitable G A string to ensure the precision level of 0 0.01 for the real variable and the precision level of 1 for the, the integer variable. Now, let us try to solve this particular the numerical example. Now, how to determine how many bits are to be assigned to represent so this particular the real variable. Now, this particular formula we have already got we have already discussed how to derive that we have seen. Now, I am just going to use this particular the formula just to find out this uh, how many bits are to be assigned to represent the, the real variable. Now, here actually what we do is what we, what we do is we try to uh, calculate this L 1 and to calculate this L 1 to calculate this L 1. So, we know the x 1 maximum that is 10.43 and we know x 1 minimum is 0 0.2 and the desired accuracy level is 0 0.01 and if you calculate this will become log base 2 1023 and that is approximately equal to log base 2 2 raised to the power 10 and that is approximately equal to your 10. So, uh, so, the number of bits which I am going to assign to represent this particular real variable is 10. That means, we are going to assign 10 bits to represent this particular the real variable. Similarly, if you want to determine how many bits are to be assigned to represent the integer variable. So, I can use this particular formula and if I just substitute the values x 2 maximum is 63, x 2 minimum is 0 and here the accuracy level is 1 and if we calculate this will become log base 2 63 which is approximately equal to the log base 2 63 is approximately equal to 64. So, this is nothing but 2 raised to the power 6 and that is equal to 6. So, I will have to assign 6 bits to represent this particular the integer variable and once you have got this particular information, now I can design this particular your the G A string. Supposing that the, this is the G A string, so the first the 10 bits will represent your the real variable. So, this is going to represent the real the 10 bits and the remaining 6 bits are going to represent this particular your the integer variable. So, this is the way actually we can represent the G A string in order to handle the problem having uh, one real and one integer that is nothing but the mixed integer optimization problem. Thank you.